Has this shooting changed the trajectory of this race? I don't know, and you don't know either. But have, have you s taken a step back and done a little soul searching on things that you may have said that could incite uh, people who are not balanced? How do you talk about the threat to democracy, which is real, when a president says things like he says? Do you just not say anything because it may incite somebody? Do you feel like you've weathered the storm on, on this issue of whether you should be on the ticket or not? Well, look, 14 million people voted for me to be the nominee. Who do you listen to on deeply personal issues like the decisions whether to stay in the race or not? Me. President Joe Biden sat down with NBC's Lester Holt as part of his media tour meant to persuade Democrats, uh, both in Congress and Democratic voters, that he has the energy and the mental acuity to take on Trump. Now, did he make a good case for himself? You know, there have been other. No. Okay, well, <laughs> we're going to get to a lot of highlights. We're going to show you some videos from the interview. Uh, so, with that in mind, let's take a look at the first portion of the conversation where they kind of discussed his ability to beat Donald Trump and whether he's going to stay in the race. I'm going to debate him when we agreed to debate, and I'm going to debate him in September. But if if the opportunity came up to do one between now and then, is there is there a sense of wanting to get back on the horse? I'm on the horse. Where have you been? I've done 22 major events and thousands of people. Overwhelming crowds, a lot happening. I'm on the horse. What I'm doing is going out and demonstrating to the American people that I'm command of all my faculties, that I don't need uh, notes, I don't need teleprompter. I can go out and answer any questions at all. If you were to have continue to run and, and be officially nominated, what happens if you have another episode like we saw during the debate? What happens? Yeah. What hap what happens if if you have another performance on that par on that, on that level? I don't plan to have another performance on that level. So clearly, he is not only planning to remain in the race, but a big question a lot of us had asked is whether Biden still wants to debate Donald Trump, and that debate is set for September. And Jane Key is definitely planning on debating Trump again. Thanks for watching. Our audience has helped build TYT into the media giant it is today. Together, we can accomplish anything. Support our work and join us at tyt.com slash team. Yeah, but there's actually something really interesting there. Because I thought that was the best question that Lester Holt asked, which is Trump says he's willing to do it again right now. So do you want to do it? And so he said, no, he wants to do it in September. But brother, you're behind. You're way behind. I mean, there's a poll out where you're losing New Jersey. And right now, we'll get to this a little bit later, but Democrats back in a panic, including all the way through Adam Schiff, right? Because you're about to lose all of Congress. So if I'm behind in a race, I say yes to a debate right away, right away. Trump wants to do another debate with you where you could then come back and show how vibrant and great you are. And that it was just an off night and you were sick and you're not sick anymore. Uh, that's how you make up ground. Right. And he's saying no. You know why he's saying no? Because he can't handle another debate and he knows it. That you shouldn't be the candidate. It's so obvious. Any candidate that's behind, especially if they're way behind, that says no to a debate is a candidate who is a guaranteed to lose. Absolutely positively guaranteed because that means they're not even trying to win. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I. Do you think that debate is really going to happen? I mean, look, he's not going to be the candate by that. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a possibility that that will be the case. Uh, but in terms of how he handled that messaging in this interview, it was clear that he remained defiant. <laughs> and then Lester Holt asked, well, you know, what about what your closest allies in Congress have to say about you? So let's go to that video next. Your allies, James Clyburn, Nancy Pelosi, have kind of put it out there that they're waiting for your decision, giving you time to make your decision. What I hear from you is that you made your decision. Are you still comfortable in that decision? Has anything changed in the last several days? No. Who do you listen to on deeply personal issues like the decisions whether to stay in the race or not? Me. Look, I've been doing this a long time. The idea that I'm the old guy, I am, I'm old, but I'm only three years older than Trump. 
number one. And number two, my mental acuity has been pretty damn good. I've got more done than any president has in a long, long time in three and a half years. So briefly, I just want to touch on the talking point that we've heard from Biden and Biden supporters over and over again. And when I say Biden supporters, I'm not talking about the voters. I'm specifically talking about political allies. It is admirable that he has done some things as president of the United States. Massive you know, legislative goals were met, although it wasn't obviously his entire agenda, not even close. It's not about what he's already accomplished. It's about whether he has the ability to win and beat Donald Trump. And if he does, miraculously, considering how low he is in the polling, especially in the battleground states, if he pulls off that win, is he going to be able to serve another four years? That is the question. We're not asking about your record. We're not even questioning your record. That's not what the conversation is about. And I just hate that it's this constant effort to deflect and talk about his record when his record has nothing to do with the fact that as you get old, it's it's a it progresses. His whatever condition it is, it progresses. It gets worse. Okay, so look, every interview is a disaster, and it's only a varying levels of disaster. We're so used to him not being able to finish a thought. They were like, "Oh, he didn't pass out in the middle of that interview." Okay, well, maybe he's back on the horse, as he says. What horse? What are you talking about? That horse went to Old Town Road a long time ago. So here, uh, let's look look at one of our uh, viewers, Lady Little Throat, and he's giving aggressive non-answers and getting old man snippy. Exactly right. That's exactly what I saw in that interview and in the other interview that he did with Complex. So by the way, I love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button below to become one of the members and become part of the show. Okay. So now, when I'm watching that debate, uh, that interview. He starts an answer, then switches to another answer, then switches to another answer and switches. He's he's can't even finish the talking points. He's got like a quarter talking point and then a quarter talking point. Brother, you keep falling off the horse at every answer. Even the ones that were supposed to reassure us, like who do you talk to? Now you can say, hey, I of course White House Chief of Staff, I got my pollsters, I've got consultants, or you know, I got great allies that I trust. These are Answers that give us reassurance that you're talking to a variety of people, getting their input and making a rational decision, especially when it's so important right. and democracy is on the line, according to you, right? And he says, "Me, that's the guy I consult with." That's a terrible answer, terrible. And then, uh, what happens if you have another episode? First of all, that answer itself was another episode. This is going viral online now because he was like. Arr, 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 arr. Right? Oh, you're having one. He's like, I don't plan on having another episode. Too late. And it doesn't matter whether you're planning on it. What happens if another one happens? You have to have an answer for that. He doesn't have these answers prepared. He just keeps going back to the same thing. I watch all these interviews now. Oh, Trump is the one trying to take away democracy. Trump says racist things. Over and over and over again. They ask him, what are you going? What's your agenda for the next term, right? Holt asked, that's a softball. That's as big a softball as it gets. He did not say one thing about the economy. He did not say one policy proposal. He went back to Trump's against democracy. Well, brother, if you're not gonna try, then get the hell out of the race. Well, okay, so I actually wanna comment on that. First of all, great point. And his decision to remain in the race has essentially sucked all of the air out of the room. And all of the attention on the Democratic side, of course, is now on whether or not Biden is gonna continue running, whether or not Democrats are going to find some way to persuade him to step down so someone more competitive can run against Donald Trump. And what's frustrating about that is, especially now that we're at the RNC and we see the types of conversations that are taking place, you can feel that voters here are incredibly energized. Uh, when we first got here today, uh, there was someone working security who recognized us and happened to be a fan. And he he's like, yeah, you know, people are feeling real smug here. And I was like, yeah, I would feel smug too. Who wouldn't feel smug? You know, they're taught, they have a, the Teamsters president giving a keynote speech. You know, there's just a lot of energy here. And there's talk of policy, even if it's policy that we don't favor, it's still a much more substantive conversation for their side compared to what we are dealing with on our side. And it's just unfair to Democratic voters to have a Democratic Party 
that is hyper focused right now on Biden's unwillingness to let go of power and be that bridge candidate or bridge uh, politician that he claimed to want to be when he was running for his first term. It's incredibly frustrating. And Shane, the other thing that I'll say is it has become very clear to me that Biden's not getting the full picture of what the polling suggests. Okay, and so let's watch the next clip because he touches on that and I'll discuss what I mean. Are you all on the same page? Are you seeing what they saw, which was moments of, frankly, of, that appeared to be, you appeared to be confused? Lester, look, why don't you guys ever talk about the 18, the 28 lies he told? Where, where are you on this? Why didn't the press ever talk about that? 28 times it was confirmed he lied in that debate. I had a bad, bad night. I wasn't feeling well at all. It, and I had been, without him making it, I screwed up. But I, I, I just asked a question because the, the, the idea that you may or may not have seen what some of these other folks have seen, you're not on the same. I'd have to see, I was there. <laughs> I'd have to see it, I was there. And by the way, seriously, you won't answer the question, but why didn't the press talk about all the lies he told? Well, I haven't heard anything about that. We have, we have reported many of the issues that no, came up in that debate. No, you haven't. We'll provide you with them. God, oh, God love you. Okay. <laughs> so that's another example of him getting you know snippy during this interview. And it's just so weird to see, to some extent, roles reversed where you know we would criticize Trump for being so aggressive for the media for not serving as his mouthpiece. And in this case, you know, Biden seems to think, no, I'm actually doing really well. The race was always close from the start, which it shouldn't have been close from the start. That's insane. And he thinks it's a toss up based on the polling. But once you dig a little bit and you look at the battleground states and you look at states that used to be, I mean, Democratic strongholds like New Jersey, it's a completely different picture. So the question is, is Biden aware of these points or is he just completely delusional? Look, we're having a debate just because the other side is forcing us into it. Yep. But this is nonsensical. If you just took a person who's not familiar with American politics and showed him that person, and it's, they wouldn't believe that he's running for president, no way. That person looks super old, disjointed answers, cranky, doesn't answer any of the actual questions. Hey, look, people are concerned about how you did in the debate. Well, are you talking about his lies? No, first, look, I don't mind you bringing up the lies, okay? But first, you've got to establish that you're fine. I said, of course, like if I, if they ask me that question, I say, well, of course I'm fine. That's why I created twice as many jobs as Donald Trump. And that's why I said in the debate this, that, the other thing, give them all my policies, give them, get, reassure us that you're firmly in command and that you're way better and that you're positive for the American people, way better than Trump and I got this. Then turn to Trump's lies, right? But when you don't even address the question and you're like, hey, listen, Jack. <laughs> and now what was that awkward laugh? Everything is, we don't, it's a train wreck guys. It's a train wreck. If you can't see it, you're trying super hard not to see it. He's a goner, there's no way he laughs. This is ridiculous. And every time I see these train wreck interviews, I think Jill Biden is an egomaniac. The first lady, how is she throwing him out there, man? I couldn't stand if a loved one went through one of these excruciating interviews, right. let alone the debate, which was just an historic embarrassment. And you're gonna keep putting your husband through that over and over and over again, because you'd like to stay in power, let's be honest.